As you might be aware, sweet potato is nutritious and also it is high in fiber. So it's one of those foods that we want to incorporate as part of our menu as we practice hospitality. But you don't want to eat it the same way. And in today's video, I want to show you a different way of making your sweet potato and enjoying it as well. Welcome to Recipes and Hospitality with Clara. This is a channel where we share recipes that are simple, easy to do at home with ingredients toned down to enhance your hospitality for the glory of God. And if you're new here and this is the kind of content you like, kindly consider subscribing, hit the notification bell. You'll be notified every time I upload new content. I upload this kind of content that is very simple to make at home so that your hospitality can be a blessing in your household and to many others. So before before we work on this very nutritious food, we will pray as is always our custom and trust the Lord to grant us a fruitful time together. Indeed, Father, that's our prayer. Please grant us a fruitful time in the kitchen as we work on this recipe and every other thing we will do in the kitchen, both for me and my viewer, grant us your help and your fruitfulness. Our eyes are on you, in Jesus' name, amen. begin by mixing all the dry ingredients in a bowl. You can see I'm mixing in the corn flour or cornstarch into the all-purpose flour, the baking powder, the sugar, and the salt. So basically combine all of them until evenly combined. Then set aside. In a separate bowl, that's your one large potato, sweet potato, that's already boiled. I'm going to slash it further into smaller pieces so that we can mash it. I am using a masher and you can also use uh, your wooden spoon to do this. But a masher works really fast and really well. So once you've mashed your potato, now you can add in the wet ingredients. Add in the four tablespoons of salad oil and your egg. Mix them with your wooden spoon until finely mixed Sweet potato actually mashes really well and mixes very well, as you will see. And especially when the sweet potato has been frozen. Now that I buy a lot of them, boil, freeze, and then when I, I defrost them, they actually uh, defrost and then they are softer when you need to mash them. That's another way you can also do to meal prep and make your potatoes differently every time you, you defrost them. So once you've mixed, as you can see, we will put in half of the dry ingredients and then using our wooden spoon, mix them in until well mixed or at least until we can mix it really well. So now after this, as you can see, the wooden spoon now can't do the job as well as your hands so just dig in with your hands I don't think you will need any liquid but in case you mix and the dough is too stiff you can add in a few drops of milk or water but the result of this is just good enough the consistency of the dough so we will mix in the rest of the dry ingredients and knead with our hands until well kneaded as you will see so we've made a dough that is fairly stiff but I can tell you it is soft because the potato in the dough 
makes the dough still remain somewhat soft and not really hard but like i said just in case your dough becomes too stiff you can always add in a few drops of milk or water but i don't think it will be necessary now we go to the next stage of greasing our pans i am going to use two pans mine are about 10 to 11 inches in diameter so they are fairly big i'm using two pans so that we can go faster and of course we are going to if we do on our or on top of our gas cooker we will bake twice so that we can finish baking all the cookies so grease your pan really well and then dust it with a little flour as you can see me do now next we will begin to scoop our dough just measure it estimate i'm using a tablespoon but you may need a teaspoon actually because i am making uh, bowls that are about an inch i would say in diameter actually if you want your cookies even more crispy you may need to make a thinner dough than that you may need um, less dough than that so that you can make this the the pieces really thin you make a ball as i'm doing between your palms from a piece of the dough and then just flatten it out with your fingers that one is sufficient because it, it's going to rise and the cookies will be fairly thick and soft but like i said if you want them crispy just flatten out really flat because the baking powder in the dough is going to make them rise just a little and they will remain crispy as a result so space them out as you can see me do so that you can give them space the individual pieces to rise now this is optional my daughters love to do this because they like the salty taste on the cookies when they do this melt some butter in the microwave or you can place this container on top of um, hot water so that it can melt so melt butter or margarine and then mix in the quarter teaspoon of salt and then mix in and then now brush the top of the cookies with that mixture the salty taste is what they really love and if you would want that you could also try this as well so we are going to brush them with a mixture of uh, margarine or butter whichever one you have and salt mixed in and then we will cover our cookies so that they can go ahead begin to now when you're baking on your oven we will first have the fire on high just to heat up the pan like i'm doing for a few seconds please stay there so that you don't forget and your cookies burn so about 20 to 30 seconds actually and now reduce the fire not that way the natural way your gas cooker goes to its lowest as it has been designed by your manufacturer because that's too high so bring it back up and then take it as though you're switching off and take it to the lowest the lowest as you can see me do that's the kind that is going to bake your cookies without burning them so bake them from about for about 20 to 25 minutes Actually, depending on your fire, you could start checking on them from 15 minutes just to be sure they don't burn. I wanted to say something about this smaller burner. For these very small burners, you don't have to take it as though you're switching off. The lowest as designed by your manufacturer should be enough to bake your cookies once the pan has heat up. But just to be sure that it's not too high, make sure you check on your cookies at least for 15 minutes and then continue. I wanted to show you what I did with the second batch that you can also do. I made them into bowls like I did and then I used a fork to flatten them out. This is a nice design that you can also work with. Mm -hmm. 
Now we've done about 25 or so minutes. Like I said, it will vary depending on your fire, but ours are ready. But as you can see, the top part is still um, that color. We want it to brown to a golden brown like the underside of the cookie. So we will turn them over. And then once we've turned them over, we will again brush them with that mixture that we had made earlier. As you can see me do again we said this is optional so you don't have to do this so once you have brushed them with that mixture cover them and give them about 10 to 15 minutes that's enough to brown your cookies on that underside because they are already cooked so you can start checking on them again from 10 minutes if they haven't browned really well uh, give them another five minutes and then they'll be ready so that's how our cookies turned out sorry i forgot to give you the footage of how the other ones we did with a fork turned out but they were all tasty and i'm sure you're going to enjoy your cookies a lot We really enjoyed our cookies and I'm hopeful that you will enjoy them as well when you try out this recipe. I hope to do another recipe of how we also creatively work on our sweet potatoes and I will upload it soon. Meanwhile, you could check out this developing playlist right here of other ways that we make sweet potato so that you can find more creative ways of doing it as well as just getting ideas as you watch those recipes of how you can also make your sweet potatoes differently. Thank you so much for joining me. Look out for our next recipe. Again, another delightful, very simple recipe that you can make at home for your hospitality. And until that next video, bye.